today's Saint, Saint Athanasius, is perfectly connected to it being first Thursday of the month and we, and we celebrate uh, this day uh, where we pray for uh, priests and holy priests especially because that is really what Saint Athanasius did in his lifetime. He embodied this perfect example of the virtues that priests must embody. Now, it is one thing to focus on all the good fighting that St. Athanasius did against the Arian heresy. And of course, this is what made him a doctor of the church. And of course, this is what he was, is largely known for, for his heroic fight against error, not to, uh, viewing that as truly this, this something that is offensive even to the sight uh, to, to be able to be heard of or, or to be visited uh, upon him in that way. He hated the error and he f learned and uh, uh, strongly his faith and fought strongly against that error. But there's far more to it that makes the man a saint and that model priest and model bishop than just combating error. What really make St. Athanasius so great is the parts of what each priest is called to be that he developed so strongly in himself. First and foremost, the priesthood is one that is a vocation completely devoid of self-interest whatsoever. It is one that seeks God as its primary focus above all else. With St. Athanasius, this couldn't be more true. With him, he sought out that solitude and quiet for prayer and the time for reflection and the time to focus on, on works of piety and penance for himself. Going into the desert, finding Saint Anthony of the desert and spending several years there studying under him and living that life of solitude, quiet and removal from the world to find those sweet heavenly fruits that he was most interested in gaining for himself. It said of Saint Athanasius that he would have lived out all of his days there in the desert with Saint Anthony if it was up to him, but it wasn't up to him, which continues on that same line of thinking of what is that motto for the priest. It wasn't his own will that he followed, but always followed after the will of God. If he sought to serve God, it was going to be by doing the will of God above all else. He was, at a certain point, became known for how well learned he was in the truths of the faith. And so Alexander, the Bishop of Alexandria, Patriarch of Alexandria, he, hearing of Athanasius's abilities, calls him out of the desert. He doesn't want to leave, but now his, the one who is his superior, the, the, the patriarch that he falls under, has beckoned him to the city. And so he humbly goes and goes to Alexander and comes to him, and he's made to be his assistant to go around and help him in combating the Arian heresy. It's not just the error that has found its way to some, but rather one that has infected a great multitude, a majority of people in Christendom now fall into this error. And so he faithfully serves the bishop for whatever his needs are. He goes about and he preaches to the, to the faithful the truths of the faith, catechizing them in his sermons, teaching them truths, and comparing it to the, to the faults of the errors of the heresy of the day, and convincing them and ensuring in them, assuring up with a great strength in their hearts the belief in the truth about exactly the divinity of Christ. From that, it became sort of whispered amongst people, not just uh, that uh, perhaps it was the will of Alexander, but really that the, the multitude of people in the city of Alexandria would want that one day Athanasius would succeed Alexander as being the patriarch. Again, we find another important virtue of the priesthood 
practice of humility. Athanasius wanted nothing to do with this honor. So what did he do? Fearing that it might become reality, well before Alexander died, he himself left the city behind and went into hiding that he wouldn't be appointed to this weighty position. He was gone for six months and Alexander at that, at that time made the, the comment at a certain point that he thinks that he can hide from what God has ordained and this cannot be of course it became known he Alexander put it down in writing made it known to all that would have it and when Athanasius was found this was brought to his attention that it is not what he wants but it is what is put down in the will of God that he is to be the successor of Alexander it is the faith the people have faith in his abilities and he is chosen by them and by his predecessor to this position and at once he realizes <clears throat> that it's truly divine will well he hides no more and he immediately accepts the position he never wanted from there we see in him one who is strong in the eye of in protecting the faith but gentle in his touch to the individuals always having compassion on the faithful ready to to explain things to them well to to walk them through the 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 confusion to show them the light of the truth and to take the time to 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 go out of his way to visit all of his churches to, to speak with all of his clergy to to go and meet with all of the people and and when these duties weren't occupying him he would always immediately retreat back away from the world and find the, the quiet in his own place where he could pray and contemplate and do penance again the desert of solitude in his private life but the the, the true uh, expression of, of 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 kindness and charity to those in his public duties that he exercised he embodied moreover that calmness that is necessary in the face of crises during the Athanasian heresy it was much it could be very much compared to a way it would have been at the time right after the second vatican council and the, the church was thrown into great turmoil but it said of that at that time period over 90 percent of the world's bishops became arian and a great multitude of the faithful and it was a very violent combatation that took place between the errors of uh, of arian and the uh of Arius and the and the true faith of the Catholics and <clears throat> and persecutions happened and people suffered a great deal and they wondered where the hand of God was how they were going to find their way out of it how they were going to see these things through well Athanasius was their leader it would do them no good for him to stand there and panic in the face of such hardship it would do no good for him to show forth great anxiety about what was going to take place no there is a god and that god is always invested in the good of souls and he is always intervening and listening to our prayers and that he will always triumph in the end these are the words of confidence that he would speak to the people he would tell them that the, this trial is a hard trial but it is one that cannot last forever. And as he said at one point in time, soon enough the storm shall pass and all shall be made calm. And this filled the people with great confidence and the, the ability to trust and to fervently offer their own prayers for the resolution and the return of the strength of the faith and salvation of many souls. He, at many times, was himself the victim of persecution. He was brought before tribunal and had the people calumniate his name greatly. They would lie about him and they would try to defame him in ways to embarrass him. But never once did he show anger 
in return for these things. Never once did he lash out at his enemies. Never once did he, in any way, shape, or form, allow his passions to rule over him in these things. But rather, he exercised the virtue of charity in all of that, trusting in, the, in God to make the truth known. At one point during a trial that was had for him, there was a woman who was paid money, and she was a woman of, of bad uh, repute, and she was paid money to tell all of these horrible lies about the character of Athanasius. But she had never even met the holy bishop, and at one point, one of the priests, the few that were present at the trial, that was actually Athanasius's friend, realized in the testimony that this woman had no idea who St. Athanasius was. And so at a certain point he gets up and he confronts the woman and he says, are you saying that I did this and I caused you to commit these sins and I did these things? And the woman said, yes, I, I do accuse you of doing these. I know you had done them not realizing she was pointing to and speaking to somebody, not St. Athanasius, thus proving the innocence of the holy bishop and that even his enemies amongst the trial could not deny. For him. And other times he was sent into exile during the time of those persecutions against him. He didn't fear t to give his life for God, but he knew that in these times there were so few that were willing to lead the flock that he would take the safe the precautions to to safeguard his life in order that he still may be a good influence to the flock one point in time he lived in a cistern for a number of years being brought secretly food from a friend of his while maintaining life and sending out messages to people at another point in time he was only barely able to escape from a, a command to have him executed from the city of Alexandria where he was upon a boat. And all the while we see again the calm confidence and even the sense of humor of the man that as he's escaping by boat and there are persecutors coming up the same river that are passing him by. And as they go past him, they look to the boat and Athanasius being somewhat in disguise and also not recognized or, or known by the persecutors, call out to the boatsmen and say, we are seeking after Athanasius. Do you know where he is? And St. Athanasius himself responds back to the other boat and says, he is not far. Keep looking. You'll be sure to see him soon. And they kept passing by in their own way. St. Athanasius, even in the great danger, la having a chance to laugh and not to be worried about it, trusting again in divine providence. And then again, all the while, whenever the opportunity would come, he would get up and would seize the opportunity to preach, even to just a small handful of people, anybody who would come and listen and hear the words of our faith is what he did. He had an undying love for the faith, and so he made it, made sure of it, that he instilled it in as many as could be. His steady hand, his model of virtue, his, his undying love and defense of the faith, his humility and, and, um, and, and charity, these were the things that why we celebrate his feast day here over, over 1800 years later after he has gone because it is that which makes up a saint and it is those things that everyone who is called to the priesthood are called to embody in a great degree. We are not all perfect at it but it is for us as priests and those who later may be called to the priesthood to remember that it truly is a selfless vocation that is never to seek after one's own well-being first but rather always after God and the good and needs of the people before all else. May God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.